Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you here on February 13th to talk about the LPL two game Valentine's Day slate. Um, that's what will take place tomorrow morning. Um, sorry for those of you um, who, you know, have asked me, messaged me about my status on, and on the videos. Um, I have been away out of town, out of country, rather, um, for for my other job, my full-time job, day job. Um, so I did not have good bandwidth. And frankly, I was not available to make these sort of videos and actually play any DFS slates. So I'm back. Um, I'll be making a lot more regular videos on a regular basis. Um, so yeah. Without any further ado, let's dive in. Like I said, it's a two-game slate for tomorrow. And then the day after that, we'll have, you know, starting on Wednesday, uh, we're going to have uh, four-game slates, you know, both for LCK and LPL. But today, it's just, a, you know, like a little teaser, two-game slate. So let's dive in. Top Esports uh, versus IG is the first game. It's a very good game in my opinion i mean i don't know ig has been <clears throat> exceeding expectations this season so far um with the new roster here and then top esports has been playing pretty well as well um but top esports should be favored and they are at minus two, 240 and then ig is an underdog at plus 185 um that's gonna be an interesting matchup and we'll dive in and look at some metrics and everything and kind of come up with my prediction and then Thunder Talk on uh, Weibo Gaming is the second game on this on the slate. Um, Weibo Gaming has been pretty good. Um, but Thunder Talk has been okay. Um, I do think Weibo Gaming should be favored by this much. I think minus two fifty, minus three fifty. Okay, so Weibo Gaming is a bigger favorite than Top Esports. So yeah, I mean, I I agree with that because Thunder Talk is pretty bad, and Invictus Gaming has been playing pretty well, even though. I think their opponents so far has been kind of mediocre um, in the bottom half of the LPL standings, but but they have shown some great um, synergy between the top half of the map, at least YSKM and Gideon and Dove. Um, they've been pretty good, but yeah. So let's let's look at some stats that I typically look at. So I want to make some notes. So let's do this. This is how I usually set it up. Um, all right. Top Esports, IG. Let's look at Oracle Elixir. This is the website. I think somebody asked me where I get my stats or metrics. Uh, this is the primary website that I get uh, such stats. Let's look at... TES and IG. All right. So far, Invictus Gaming is 11 and 2 in games. This is this does not necessarily mean like series standings, the actual state, but this is actually like how many games and how many game, how many uh, games you have won and how many games you've lost, regardless of the series. Um, Invictus Gaming, as you can see, has better record than Top Esports, which is surprising. <laughs> um, given a good, like, mediocre sample size, I mean, it's 13, 10, like, 10 plus games in, like, you have a pretty good sample size. So, and jungle percentages is one of the <clears throat> key factors that I look at in, you know, making match predictions. And Invictus Gaming is slightly ahead at plus. 1.9 percent I do want to see who they played so far um and exactly um what kind of opponents they played and lane control percentage. IG is also leading in that regard. Dragon percentage, first blood percentage, gold spent percentage difference. IG is up as well. Hmm. By a lot though. Like 7.5%. 
Let's see KPM. I want to see 0.81. IG plays a little bit faster, slightly faster. That's interesting. Okay. I want to see IG's opponent so far. All right. They've played against anyone's legend, one of the worst teams in the LPO. Okay. RNG, pretty good team, but kind of struggling as well. EDG, pretty good team. EDG is probably the best team that I've talked about so far. Thunder Talk is pretty bad. LGD is pretty bad. And then FPX is mediocre. So probably EDG, uh, RNG slash FPX are the, probably the two best teams, three best teams that they've played against. I want to see who top esports has played so far. They've played against anyone's legend as well. It's the worst team in the in the LPL so far. Weibo Gaming's good. So and they went to game three. They've lost that series where Adam's been pretty good. You saw them this morning. Um and they beat Rare Adam. Um that's really impressive. Ninjas in pajamas, not so good. Ultra Prime, not so good. Um, yeah, I think it's gonna be pretty close. I think, um, I don't want to see the metrics for the junglers here between these two guys. Gideon versus Tian. Tian has been struggling a little bit early in the split so far. Um, but he still leads in gold or in gold percent uh per minute compared to Gideon's, which is very important and interesting given the difference in the jungle control percentage difference for the team. I think Tian has been a little better lately in their wins. The, his kill participation is better, which is I think is a, it's very important in this meta. Um, just making plays and getting involved, helping out their teammates, especially in the bottom lane um, with Jackie Love um, and Mark. Kill share percentage higher. Yeah, I mean, I think top esports should win, but I just would not rule out IG automatically as I've done before in previous seasons. Um, I do think having that Tian's playing Tian playing better. And then I do want to show you like the matchup. Cheng Tian has been playing really well. I think I think he's been like underrated so far in the split. But every time I watch them, he's always pushing the side lanes and making different plays for his team. I think that's very important now in this meta with um, I think I think the bottom lane and the jungler are the most important positions, but top laners have not been very influential in these matchups. Um, but some some few players have, and Cheng Tian is one of them so far I've seen. But actually, in this matchup, YSKM as well has been doing that as well. So I think that's a wash. But I think actually YSKM has been having a little better season split so far. But I think Cheng Tian is no joke either unless he tilts a lot. I mean, which he can. He's notoriously known for doing that. Where if he if his if like some part of the game doesn't go well, he tends to kind of just be in his own spot in his own head. Um and then YSKM. YSKM might struggle against Cheng Tian. I think the fact that Cheng Tian is aggressive. I think YSKM has not faced a faced the top laner like that yet. EDG, let me see, Flandre. And I said FPX, Xiaolao. Hey, Xiaolao, who's actually kind of like that, like Ching Tian, but not as aggressive. Uh, yeah, I think that'll be interesting. And then, like I said, I showed you Tian has been a little better um, than Gideon in terms of the metric. Um, but in real life, yeah, I think Tian has been playing a little slightly better the last couple of weeks, actually. actually. And then rookie Jackie Love over Dove and not. Yeah, I mean, I think top esports have an advantage there. I do want to see the top laner difference. I do think it will make a little difference. I think IG has relied a lot on YSKM. <clears throat> you'll, you'll see like his kill share percentage. 
yeah, like you see, he's he's like second in kill share percentage for IG um, at 25.8%. So he's been actually kind of a carry for that team. And I want to see how he fares against uh, Ching Tian <clears throat> in the top lane in terms of metrics. So earn gold per minute, YSKM leads. So he has a little bit of advantage there. Damage percentage, yeah, YSKM's, you know, pumping out more damage for the team. And that kind of you know, correlates with the kill share percentage because he's doing a lot of damage and racking up kills. Um, I do want to see one thing. Where is that metric? OCS per minute. Okay, that's about the same. Damage. Yeah, I mean, YSKM, is, it looks like his metrics are a little better. But as mentioned, they played against some weak teams. So I think his stats are a little inflated. So I think I think Cheng Tian should be fine, but we'll see. But in other lanes, top esports has an advantage. So I think top esports wins, but don't rule out IG. But I think I think as I think as long as Cheng Tian holds the top lane versus YSKM, top esports should have an advantage in every other lane. Good performance by Tian lately as well. Better metrics than Gideon. So, all right. So there's that. Let me see Thunder Talk versus Weibo Gaming. That's the next matchup. Um, a little more one sided, um, I think. But let's kind of val valid uh verify those odds or validate those odds rather by looking at the stats for the team. I want to see the do the exact same thing. See compare the metrics. Weibo Gaming has a little a little better jungle control percentage at plus 1.4 percent so you see like ig and ig had better percentages but like i said their opponents were a little inferior than top esports's opponents um respectively so it's kind of but yeah like i said that's why i said don't rule out ig i mean the stats are better but tian's stats were better uh get the stats so anyway, all right. To go back to the second matchup on the slate, Weibo Gaming has a jungle control percentage advantage. Lane as well, lane control percentage. Gold spend percentage difference too. I mean, you see Weibo at plus three, 3.3%. And then combined kills per minute metric, let's measure the kill upside point. What is between 0 0.857 to 0.7, 0.79 ish? Yeah. So 0 0.79, 0 0.81. I mean, like both of these matchups are about the same, but I want to say that Weibo Gaming plays faster than Thunder Talk. That is true. So, so maybe Weibo Gaming's uh, kill upside. Will be a little more reduced today by playing Thunder Talk, who plays who plays a little bit slower. So who knows? So on on, on a two game slate, you just gotta kind of have your convictions and kind of go with that, and then build your lineup that way. Because in um, League of Legends DFS, for those of you who are new and play at playing DFS esports esports DFS, the match outcomes positively correlate in like ninety nine percent of the times. Um, with the DFS output of these players, so you want to pick players that are on the winning team. So you gotta kind of. This is why I have to predict, you know, the match outcomes and stuff like that. So that's why I'm doing this. Weibo Gaming, yeah, I mean that's expected. They have a lot more advantages. Um, I want to see who they've played against so far. Weibo Gaming has played against. Top Esports, who's pretty good. We just talked about them, and they beat them. Then BLG, who's really good, um, and they lost to them in three games. FPX, who's been really good. I mean, not really good, pretty good. 
um, and they beat two to zero. JDG was really good. I thought they were gonna win, but Weibo Gaming actually pulled off an upset, which was very very impressive. So Weibo Gaming actually is in a good spot in good form, but then is this <laughs> is this a so called letdown spot where they let down against? a bad opponent in Thunder Talk. I don't think so, um, but we'll see. I think um, the fact that it's also it's a second game, I think it will help them motivate a little more by watching top esports and IG play. That sometimes helps a lot. Um, kind of like a little nugget, I think. If it's a letdown spot, it's less likely to happen, at least from what I've seen in the LPL or in the LCK, that like if you like are watching one of the other good play good teams play against a bad team and they tend to lose or they struggle like Weibo gaming you know they'll be a little more motivated to play better um not allow that letdown to occur so we'll see what happens there but i'm just rambling at the moment but i want to see thunder talks strength of schedule uh they played against lng who's a pretty good team with tarzan and jungle they lost uh, WE. They lost IG. They won two to one. Wow, that's surprising. So I do think that tells me IG is a little more fraudulent than maybe most people think. But Thunder Talk played against Ultra Prime, who's okay. LGD is bad. So yeah, I mean, I think Weibo Gaming should handle this as long as they don't fall into that letdown trap. Um, I do want to see the players here. Um, I think Carsa versus Beichuan, I think. Yeah, Carsa versus Beichuan. Let's see. Earn gold per minute. Beichuan actually might lead this. Yeah. Beichuan by slightly by 12 gold. And then kill share, Beichuan. Hmm. Yeah, Beichuan is pretty good, actually. Hmm. But then jungle control percentage, Weibo Gaming leads. So that tells me other laners are very helpful for Weibo Gaming. Um, I do want to see this real quick. Here, let's see the differences. 81, who is this? Shen Liu, the support. Oh, yeah, Yao Yao is starting today, I think, for Thunder Talk. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was starting a support for Thunder Talk. Um, jungle, jungle, top. So, Beach One leads, Weibo leads here. One thing, wow, really? I thought one thing was not having a good season so far, but his metric is pretty good. Yukal better than one things. Xiaohu, Xiaohu has been struggling. Not gonna tell you. Not gonna lie to you. Um, Shahu has been struggling, but the shy has been really good. I think he's gonna do well against Hoya. Hoya has always, always struggled against the shy. I don't know if you guys know that, but over the years, um, man, yeah, I think that's gonna be a big mismatch. And then in the AD carry position, yeah, Light should win that matchup over one thing. Like I said, Light has been really good, and yeah. So I think as long as Karsa does okay, Beichuan over Beichuan, I think that should be an easy cakewalk for Weibo Gaming, but will that happen? I don't know. Um, the letdown spot, Karsa experienced Experience matters when it's like a letdown spot like this. So that's why I'm looking at the roster. I think, like I said, the shy should have tons, like tremendous advantage outplay potential, like every single game okay, against Hoya. You saw the metrics here. Beichuan has a little bit of an advantage over Karsa, but Karsa is experienced and Xiaohu over Yukal. Yukal has been playing, playing pretty well. It's the bottom lane that I think Thunder Talk has been had. Uh, you know, very much deficient, there are very many defic deficiencies in. Um, I think Light and Crisp will dominate over Hun Fan and Yao Yao. I think Xiaohu is experienced enough that he's not going to let Yukal like get fed and snowball. 
So I'm a little worried about the jungle position, but every single other lane, I think I have to favor Weibo Gaming. Um, maybe in the mid lane, it's a wash, but then top lane and the bottom lane, I think Weibo Gaming should uh, take advantage there. So in a best of three series, yeah, I mean, I think I have to favor Weibo Gaming, but Thunder Talk, Beichuan, I mean, if they win, it's going to be on the backs of Beichuan and UCALs. So if you are like stacking underdog for Thunder Talk, I would target Beichuan and UCAL. Beichuan and UCAL, the jungle and the mid. That's that's what I target for Thunder Talk if you are stacking Thunder Talk. Um, but Weibo Gaming, I think, like I said, should win. That's my mad match prediction. But if Thunder Talk pulls off an upset, it will be off the backs of Bei Chuan, who has slightly better metrics than Karsa, WBG's counterpart jungler, and Yukal in the mid lane versus Xiao Hu, who has been struggling so far in the split. But overall, Weibo Gaming should have an a significant advantage in the top lane, the shy over Hoya, who has struggled against the shy over the ears, as well as the bottom lane where light has been lights out. Sorry, over Huan Feng, who has struggled who has been a liability along with Yao Yao in the bottom lane for Thunder Talk. Clear advantage for the Weibo Gaming AD carry. Anyway, so yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. But yeah, in terms of long stack, short stack, I think, you know, it's really a toss up. But like I said, Weibo Gaming's uh, kill upside should be reduced a little bit by playing Thunder Talk, who prefers the slower matchup. Um, top esports play tends to play fast, right? As, as well as IG. So I do think if I have to choose, I think this is the matchup to target from the kill upside standpoint, from the optimal kill ups upside standpoint. But it's a two game slate, right? Like two game slate, you can go anywhere, um, play any underdog, play any. Uh, game as a primary stack, you know, really, there are limited options. So you just kind of have to, you know, uh, differentiate your lineup by making more unique lineups and kind of, you know, make, uh, you know, vary your uh, construction and stuff like that. So anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. I'll be back tomorrow with um, a four game slate preview, which is going to be a little more exciting and a little more uh, insightful I think um, this one I I guess I'm kind of analyzing the two game slate but you know I'm kind of stretching on some of these uh, analyses and stuff like that I think clearly top esports and Weibo gaming should be favored and they should win but you know IG and Thunder Talk have few or several metrics that favor them which I think they can benefit off of and pull off an upset but in the best of three it's going to be a little more difficult than best of one so anyway if you like the video please please hit the like button below um subscribe to our channel if you want to watch videos about other sports yeah otherwise yeah good luck out there and see you tomorrow have a good one bye-bye